My name is Ian Walsh. This is The Moment Money Matters with Hard Money Bankers. Joined uh, for the second episode with uh, Brian, uh, I'm going to say, I keep looking at it, I'm literally looking at Kirk, <laughs> Kirk Dillis, right? Sorry, I'm going to do this over and over until I say it correctly the next time, but uh, it's a tough last name for some of us. Uh, but Brian, thanks for being on, man. I really appreciate having you. Great, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So we, uh, we kind of went over how... Um, your firm in the last in the last video is polished it is a polished operation and therefore has led to a lot of inquiries for business and ultimately a lot of people watching this are going to be anywhere from like big commercial investors to small mom and pop one you know single family slippers whatever realtors doesn't you know and everybody wants to know where the market's going right that's the million dollar question who's got the crystal ball i don't know if you got it over there um but you know Technically, nobody does, but what we can do, what we do this for, is, and what I do this for in a lot of these videos, is to get a bias or a feel for where the market is for, from people, because it can't last forever, but no. you got to make money while it's moving, right? Like, you, like, it's still going. It's still churning. And so talk to us from a development, which is a really interesting standpoint. Ground up development is a very sensitive spot in terms of, like, the, the, the pulse of the market, and you have a really good view. You know, what do your inquiries look like? Where do you guys see building going on right now? Like, what's what's your world look like? Uh, yeah, everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> I have a I have, I have a client that uh, says the closer you are to William Penn, the better. Uh, you can add a, a second word to that, but uh, you know, essentially, the closer you are to the center city, the better. There's not a bad zip code in Philadelphia to be buying in, as long as you're buying at the right price. Um, but we're designing. Uh, we have over I think 150 units in development right now for wow. our clients. Um, in apartment buildings, condos, ground up new constructions, a whole mix of things uh, throughout Philadelphia. And they're, that's in the design phase. So I can tell you that, you know, you know, people are like, when's it going to stop? Is it going to stop? I know it's going to stop. There's going to be a dip. You know, you can worry, but you have to, you have to live life every day. Like, you, you know, it's your last. And, you know, I think that, you know, staying positive on the market and, and just watching the effect of what's coming into Philadelphia, you know, you have a lot of outside capital pouring in here. And, I think if you look at why that's happening, um, you know, you look at the, the medium price of real estate here in Philadelphia compared to, you know, DC, New York, um, you know, it's, it's wild. And, and there's a lot of opportunity that's still left here, a lot of unclaimed land, um, you know, and, and I think Philly, you know, what's been nice about Philly is the growth rate of Philly over the last 10 years has been like at a steady, like 2% growth rate. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's not overwhelming, right? We're not seeing a spike of like, you know, people moving, you know, it, it's a steady growth rate. And I think, you know, the city calls for that kind of millennial generation to kind of stick here, um, which is exactly what I did. I came from a rural area of New Jersey where I grew up and I, uh, I really loved Philadelphia and I decided to stay here after graduation. I'm not the only one. Uh, it's sure, happening. And, lot, yeah. and we're seeing, um, especially, you know, our clients when they're building these ground up in apartment buildings, you know, I always ask them, well, who's, who's buying them? Who's renting them from you? 24 to 35 years old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's like what I hear over and over again. It's the crazy. The millennials are cannibalizing this city, man. It's what's happening. <laughs> For yep. sure. Um, so well, let me ask you this. So uh, you made a very interesting comment earlier, and you, want, and you mentioned it before we talked about the video. But like, now I'm a believer in this in terms of like a bubble. So <laughs> in order to have a bubble, you have to have, to have something not supporting a bubble, right? So you have to have like, Correct. sorry for all you Bitcoin lovers right now. It, okay, it looks like a bubble. I'm just saying, right? So I, you didn't mortgage your house and buy Bitcoin. Nah, you crazy? I didn't. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> you know. But my thought with that is that, like, you know, it's a speculative move, right? So it's, it's so what tan tangibly, what do you have supporting this inflation of Bitcoin? Like, is there what is the tangible object holding that together? Um, I don't know enough about Bitcoin. I'm just busting the chops on Bitcoin. But like, when you look at a real estate market, I look at like certain booms have happened and you go, well, what's sustaining this? Like I look at a recent one, which was uh, the Pittsburgh boom. And they had two things that came in that really like made it stay, right? It wasn't a speculative move. People just going crazy buying houses. It was you had the natural uh, gas uh, resource. You had a natural resource influx. You also had a massive movie industry coming into the city. It blows the city up. So you basically have infrastructure that can support the pricing. So what you just mentioned is very true, which is Philadelphia has a lot of capital influx right now into the city, and you have things like Amazon taking a serious look, um, and that would change. I mean, there, that's like a fifty thousand job, uh, if I'm correct. Yeah. Is that right? I think yeah, fifty-five thousand jobs. 50, I think they want to create. Not to mention the, you know, what that would create off of that, right? You bring fifty-five thousand people here now. What do you need? You need more restaurants. You need more retail yeah. to support it. You need there's there's much more than fifty-five thousand jobs that would create. And I think that's something. 
people underestimate too about that here. That's right. The byproduct um, of that sustains real estate growth. Like you go, okay, we need yeah. 55,000 more people that exactly need restaurants, need this, need that. So, so long as there is capital influx and big infrastructure to support, I know Comcast has made some big moves in the area. That kind of stuff yeah. says that doesn't stink like a bubble. That doesn't smell like a bubble to me. That smells like a sustainable move. There's always a top, but these kind of moves basically support the appreciation for as long as it'll go. So what do you, what are your thoughts on like, okay, let's say Amazon or they are approaching. What do you know about it? Talk more about that because that's a huge um, thing for the city. To yeah. Do. I mean, when I, you know, the biggest thing, so when I went to architecture school, you know, I was taught to look at a macro and micro scale of a building and location on a very quick basis, just mentally train yourself to go from macro to micro very, very quickly. Um, and then when you take that concept of learning to the real world and you apply it to things like real estate development and maybe things such as Amazon HQ, uh, Amazon releasing their HQ2 um, headquarters, you know, where would that land? Um, so I, you know, obviously I know a lot of people in this industry in this city. Um, there's a good vibe here that we actually have a really decent shot. And I'm like, you know, I hear that from people, oh, it's coming, it's coming. I'm like, nah, no way. I it can't land here. It's silly, right? You know, yeah. then, then I take a step back and I go, I go, well, if I'm Amazon, I'm looking for a, I have my West Coast presence, right? What, they buy up 60% 60, 60 of the real estate in Seattle, right? Don't they like own Seattle waterfront? Yeah, basically, right. <laughs> right. So, you know, and then I'm, I'm kind of looking, if I'm looking for another headquarters, right? You know, I'm not going to create a different vibe. I want a similar vibe to my original headquarters, you know, Seattle vibe, not to say we're, you know, they have great cheesesteaks out there too, but the vibe, the, 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 the people that live out there, you know, it, it kind of relates well to the city of Philadelphia and the diversity and, you know, the logistics to, you know, the airport. I, I just, I have this gut feeling that's telling me that the headquarters is going to land within 50 miles of Philadelphia. And I love, I love when it. I, I look love that idea. And, and I look at other factors too. I go, you know, Newark, I think is a contender, but then I go, Newark doesn't sound sexy. I love, I mean, Newark's cool, right? You go up there, watch, you know, you can watch a Rangers Devils game or something, but like, you know, it just, Newark isn't a sexy word. And then, you know, they're making a big push for Camden. You say Camden anywhere else, but Philadelphia and Camden, they, they, that's not a sexy word either. No. You know, so it, it's, you, you got to look at the logistics. It's like Philadelphia, city of brotherly love. Wow. What's going on in Philly? There's a diverse amount of people. There's millennials staying there not to mention the, the income level and the medium home prices compared to other marketplaces where their so-called 55,000 employees would end up, just doesn't seem feasible anywhere else in this Northeast corridor. They're not gonna go to Boston, but it's so expensive there. They're not gonna go to DC, it's too expensive there. And then I start thinking, you know, hone in a little bit, some more micro, you know, what, what is Amazon doing here currently? Are they doing anything here currently? Well, yes, they are. I don't know if people realize that, but up in, the Lehigh Valley up in the Route 78 corridor, which runs you all the way to Manhattan, you know where that's located, it runs from Allentown all the way directly into center city Manhattan. Um, they have a massive distribution hub up there. They built years ago. Yep. Um, I actually have tenants up in Easton that, you know, I had uh, one of my tenants actually works with Amazon, right? Yeah. Uh, so it just, and then I know <laughs> the pricing of the East and Philly, like, and they're flying planes in and out of the Lehigh Valley airport already on a daily basis. People don't even know that, but they I are. Tra Articles. I used to travel from Reading, from Reading, Pennsylvania into Philadelphia. That was my commute, two hour commute. I know that Amazon built, and I didn't go down 78 to go there, but I used 78 a lot. And I, I, it's a huge facility they have there. I mean, it's huge. Yep. Yeah, it's impressive. Yep. Yeah. And, and uh, you can side note, UPS just opened up their biggest facility in the nation there, too. People don't even realize that. Uh, I so, that. yeah, UPS. Um, so, you know, there's just a lot of factors that play into it. And I go, why would they want an office in New York? I just, it's, price of real estate. I mean, yeah, I feel like you have more options, but you also got to look at too the execs, right? If you have 55,000 fucking employees coming here, you're going to at least have 35 to 50 top level execs that are flying in and out of Philadelphia airport mm -hmm. or, or whatever airport on a weekly basis, back and forth to headquarters. Yep. That's um, right. So you, you know, you think about that aspect, it's like, I don't know. And then, you know, if I want to be in DC, I want to be doing business there. I want to be doing business in New York, you know, I just, this past weekend, I took, uh, booked Amtrak in advance three weeks out with my girlfriend, 70 bucks round trip up to New York in an hour and change, right? Yeah. So I just think that Philadelphia is the perfect spot for Amazon. Mm -hmm. Not because, you know, I, I know I'll benefit as well as many other people in the city will benefit from that coming here. But just from a logistics of Amazon, um, you know, 
I, of their, where they want to end up, I think Philadelphia's prime. And then, you know, you start looking at who the fuck are these people that are purchasing $17.5 million penthouse condos and $24 million penthouse yeah, condos. Yeah. I don't fucking know. Yeah. I don't even know if any Philly sports player could afford that at the moment. You know what I mean? I know. I always wonder. I'm like, who bought this? I was like, yeah, exactly. What Philly people. sports players buy it? Maybe an NBA player or something. I'm like, who the hell buy it? <laughs> but it's exact. You're saying it's the exact. Right? Is that, I, that, that would be that's my gut. My gut's telling me it's the exec. So I see a little bit. I mean, I I'm, my uh, you know I I dabble or not dabble. I definitely don't dabble in the seventeen million dollar purchase house. <laughs> but I uh, I know guys in that you know I because I, I ask some of the guys that I know. I'm not going to say any names. And I say who is buying that? I've asked that question. A lot of times it's the execs. A lot of times it's the guys. You know, hey, it's some massive company bought yeah. this house. I mean, second one or something. Yeah. And I hear rumors too that they already got Comcast three in the works, right? Like, you know, I know there's Comcast like, but you know, I, I just I think there's a lot of space for Amazon to come here. I know they halted the 30 Street construction that was in the news. You know, we have the Navy Yard. You know, they've always talked about extending that subway down to the Navy Yard. You know, I'm sure that might be in the proposal from the city of Philadelphia if Amazon was to come here. I would I would actually assume that they would want to be in the Navy Yard. Um, yeah, if Amazon did come here. You know, they could they could have their access to the airport within minutes and subway to Center City for, you know, happy hours <laughs> and uh, access for, for their employees to get there, I think, uh, would be great. I've also heard the side note that there's a lot of talk about is like uh, Chester area, which, you know, isn't a bad thought because, uh, you know, Amazon heavily is all about the waterfront. Mm -hmm. And I think that isn't uh, an, an option that's out of, you know, out of realm, I know Delco over there too. Is, is there's a lot of stuff moving over there, and I know those areas are 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 really good for school districts and things like that. So, um, you know, it, it's I just think there's a lot of opportunity for Amazon if they did come here for where they would want to set up shop. Yeah, I love it, man. I love the idea of it. So, so um, cool. Uh, that's a good conversation, Brian. How do people contact you if they want to talk to you more about Amazon? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, Amazon. If you got Amazon, if you want to give me a call, you need some buildings design. I would that would be awesome. We'd love to help you out. Um, but now you can. Uh, the, the best way to reach me, honestly, is if you go to our website, designblends.com. Um, you just do the contact us button. I see every one of those contact forms that comes through, um, and I have people. Hey, Brian, can you reach me? Or you can uh, email me directly at brian at designblends.com. Um, if I don't get back to you within a day, I do promise. Uh, at some point during the week, my email, my inbox is at zero. So I will get back to you. I promise. I just get a lot of emails, <laughs> usually a hundred in my inbox before I get to check it for the day. So uh, I promise I will get back to you. Um, and uh, I guess you can call us too. 215-995-0228 uh, is our office number. And uh, you'll, you'll talk with our office manager, Renee, and uh, she'll take good care of you and get you in contact with uh, whoever you need to chat with at our company. Sounds good, man. As everybody knows, it's Ian, I-A-N, at hardmoneybankers.com. And if you need money, call me. So uh, we'll catch you on the Masters of the Market.